Okay, folks, I think it's about first start time on the old Ford. Uh, I don't think this one's going to be terrible to get started. So it's been sitting, I don't know how long it's been sitting. I know that it's been off the road since 2010. So that's, what, nine years, eight years? Make sure we got it up in park here. Head release. Yeah, this is a actually a pretty nice car. Pretty nice one. This needs some TLC. Okay, one thing I wanted to talk about. I know when I done the video, and I had said something about the uh, compression fittings on the brake lines, uh, and I had somebody come on. And say that they you know they've never seen one come off or nothing like that now I have seen one come off but let me say this under normal driving conditions you probably wouldn't see one come off the problem is is when you really need the brakes when somebody pulls out in front of you when a deer runs out in front of you and you nail that brake pedal hard you know the harder you push the pedal the more you're increasing the hydraulic pressure so that's when it's going to give up on you it's going to give up on you in an emergency and that's not what you want so uh just don't take the chance on it it's not worth the it's not worth it i mean it's just not there you know if you want to take a chance on a rod bearing that's one thing because it's just going to leave you sitting but when it comes to safety that's just something you don't want to do especially when it comes to safety of somebody else because uh you know that's not necessarily gonna you know, even if it don't kill you it could kill somebody else so i mean all we've got is a there's a union down there or not a union but a I guess it is a union, but it's a block. So all we're doing is missing the line. Okay, it screws in right there. And it's it's that's gonna be a double flare fitting. And you got the single line running around. And they stopped right here. But what gets me is is now that of course there's no flare on it, but they bought a line that had a flare on it because right there is the the fitting for it. And if they could have slid that up and bought another one and put a real union in it that would have held it instead of a compression fitting. Uh, and then this compression fitting, the line looks a little rusty, so they've got it over top of rust. And you know, when you put your little ferrule over top of the, the rusty line, you know, there's you don't have as much surface area, so it's not going to hold as good. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that this would have ever given any trouble, but I'm just saying that I'm not driving it. And, and I'm worried about having to hit the brakes hard and, you know, kill myself or somebody else. And, you know, I'd rather kill myself than somebody else, be honest with you. But, you know, there's something I don't want to live with. And uh, so there's no there's no reason to take chances like that. I just would never do it. And, uh, you know, it's, if you're going to spend any money at all, that's where to spend your money at on your brake system. stuck a battery in it the other day but the other end didn't have a terminal on it but then I seen a terminal laying on the intake on the other side so we're gonna see what we can do about getting that on uh, they have done definitely some wire hacking but this looks like speaker wire and maybe amp wire and they've got it tied in over there for some reason so we'll get that out if it's not hooked to anything uh, and, um, you know of course the, the engine wiring is going to be different because of the you know this is a later model engine and I you know I haven't looked at the numbers on it yet but I, like I said I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a 351 Windsor uh, they've got mechanical temperature gauge and mechanical oil gauge in this thing so we don't have to worry about wires for gauges and stuff uh, I'm not going to worry about that try to get everything working on the dash that's not that important it's actually you know a whole lot better to have aftermarket good gauges uh, Windsor the reason that I you know from the start I'm not a Ford man don't get me wrong well you know I don't I like Fords but I'm not educated in Fords a lot uh, but what I was getting at with this setup is uh, I'm used to seeing the little narrow intake on a 302 and this is wider so you can spot that right off now, 
This, of course, is not a Y block. You know, it's an older version. Uh, it's not an FE because an FE, the intake is actually underneath this end of the valve cover, so you can spot it real quick. And then a Cleveland is going to be a wider engine. It's you know, you're not going to, it's not going to look like that. So I'm, you know, pretty sure that this is going to be a 351 Windsor. So we got D's and Dog one, A is an Apple, E is an Edward, nine four two five, and zero. A, or is that a C? I think that's a CA, maybe. No, zero A. So we can check that and see see what the casting is and see if that's a 351 Windsor because that's all that this manifold would have fit on. And uh, so anyway, we're gonna get at it here. We'll quit running my mouth and see if we can get something figured out. Now the throttle is stuck tight. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Oh man, it's stuck real tight. So definitely going to have to pull the carburetor off and see what we can if we can figure out what's up with the uh, with the throttle plates, why they're stuck so tight. But I guess we need to see, make sure the engine rolls over all the way first. The last thing we need is a stuck engine. Alright, here's that. Well, let's see if I can get that on there and I'll get the battery cable hooked up and see if the solenoid's any good and we'll go from there. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing to turn over. I know everybody's yelling starter button, starter button. Not getting anything. Let's get a uh, screwdriver on there. Okay. I hope my battery's up. I think it's up. So we got a. We've got a solenoid that's clicking, but it don't even sound like it's clicking all the way. Let me get something and uh, jump across the solenoid and see what happens here. Okay, I've just got a big wire here that I, it's off a big truck that I bent. We're just going to try to see if we short past the solenoid and it turns over. We'll make some sparks and fire. So the solenoid's bad. Let me check it with the key. See if it's even clicking. See if the wiring coming to the solenoid is any good. Yep, it's clicking. All right, so we got a bad solenoid, and then. Uh, what else? We gotta get the carburetor off. And let's see, there's the steel line. Okay, they got the line off of the carburetor. Look. Now we got stuff crawling up the filter. So something that we can do real quick while this is off, and we'll leave the key off because we don't want it to uh, catch on fire. What we'll do is take this hose that they had hooked up and we'll put this down in a gas can and see if we can get fuel up through there see if the fuel pumps working all right we got it in a gas can let's just roll it over again and see what happens Spark. out by now. Let me blow through it and see if it'll uh, get anything. The pump's definitely not pumping for some reason. It's clear I was able to blow through it. Let me try it one more time, but I got a feeling maybe that fuel pump's bad on it. Okay, so we may need a fuel pump. 
and we we don't know what kind of shape the gas tank's in. Just another worry, right? You know it's probably not in great shape. <laughs> I guess you gotta have a gas tank on it, right? Did I not notice that? That the gas tank was missing? <laughs> oh, Lord. I just didn't even look back here to see. Didn't even look back here to see. Well, we may have found the reason they quit driving it, right? That was basically the reason they quit driving the other one. Or the reason it wasn't running is because the tank was off of it when I got it. So I didn't see the straps inside either, so that's not a good thing. That tank I bought for the other one came with straps, but they weren't the right straps. So we may fuel cell this one or something, I don't know. I just cannot believe I did not notice that. I hadn't even looked up under the back of it. You know, it's in really good shape though. Looks like we got any rust on the quarters or anything like that. The truck pan is really nice, but it would be a lot nicer if it was a gas tank there. That line's clogged up too, so. Alright, well, anyway, we're starting on a can anyway, so that's not that important, but I don't guess we have to worry about cleaning the gas tank out. I just hate to spend the money on a tank for this car, but we'll figure out something, one way or the other. You know, the more money you put in them, the, the more you got to sell them for, and I like to sell cheap, and like I tell people, for just that much profit. So, uh, anyway... We'll figure it out. Let's check the tank out. Really. Just see if it's nice and yeah, that's nice and then red like it's supposed to be. That's a good sign. Alright, so celluloid fuel pump. We won't worry about the fuel pump right now. We can run our tank to here, but I'm gonna pick up a new filter. We're gonna get that carburetor apart. Might have to buy a kit for it. And uh definitely get a solenoid. I'm going to go from there. I'm hoping to see a bait cut on this thing, but no, oh, here it is. Let me see. Let's take our gas tank off. I would say that it's a 74 model engine. I mean, I'm guessing 1974. That sounds about right, I think. Got some vacuum and emissions, but not a lot. So, all right, I'm guessing that's what it is anyway. All right, well, let's uh, see what we can get done and we'll go back to here. I think I'm gonna look up under it and see what's wrong with the mounts. And I'm gonna uh, check and see Make sure that I don't see any cracks or freeze plugs out or anything like that. Uh, don't know if there's any water in it, but I'm kind of doubting it. So. Alright, show you more. Okay, we're going to start with the solenoid to get it changed. Alright, they got nuts on the bottom. My luck.
Now normally I wouldn't buy a solenoid for one that I hadn't started. But I decided to go ahead and get one. I could have crossed this over and got it started. And then I, I would have saved myself a few dollars. Especially if it turned out that the engine's no good. But the car's nice enough that I think it's going to get back together one way or the other, even if the engine is bad. So it's not that big of an issue. All right, we're gonna put the positive terminal back on. We'll give it a try. All right. Okay, before we pull the carburetor off and get some fuel to this thing, I just wanna see if it's gonna fire. I seen it. All right. Well, it's firing. Okay. Since we know it's firing, we're gonna go ahead and just pour a little gas in the carburetor, even though we know the carburetor's stuck. But just see if it does anything. Okay, let me get the carburetor off and we'll uh, see if we can get that throttle unstuck. Maybe take the top off and check it. And I can see a couple vacuum leaks. We gotta get some fuel to it, so. Uh, I don't think, I heard some lifters tapping, but it's full of oil. I did check the oil. I don't know if I done it on camera or not, but I might have done it last time, but uh, maybe them lifters will stop, you know. they. They got a lot better on my 59. I still got one that taps every once in a while when it warms up, but it's not bad. But, all right, let's get the carburetor off and we'll go from there. All right, sure smell old gas now. Old dead gas. I also found out the reason that the, uh, the engine is sitting crooked. There's the mount. Now, they didn't do the mouse right in this car at all. Well, there's a bolt missing on the carburetor on this side too, but don't surprise me. They did not do the mouse right on this thing. Uh, but, I mean, they're solid where they're at, but we're gonna do a little bit of changing on it, nothing major. It's kind of funny the way they hooked them up, so. We got the heat tube for the choke over here. It runs from the exhaust manifold over to the carburetor. Couple of vacuum lines. So that might be it. I do see some rust in the intake. Definitely got a little bit of water in it somehow. I'll show you down the intake too. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. We'll go to the other side. Sunshine's killing it today, but I'm not complaining. Don't know if you can see it or not. A lot of rust. So I guess we're lucky it's not stuck. It must have gotten some water in it somehow. So anyway, 
we will uh, do something with the carburetor and get it back on there. And I know I didn't clean the engine up and uh, if it runs out all right we'll cap it off and cover it good and then uh, pressure wash it. See if we can get her cleaned up. All right, let me see what I can get figured out on the carburetor and we'll get her back on there and then maybe get some fuel hooked up to it. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to do anything with this thing or not. It's rusted solid on this side. When I do it a little bit, I can actually see this side moving some and it's flexing, so it's definitely over here on this side. I don't know if I can find my little propane torch or not. But I probably need to heat it up or something. We've got to get something in there to, to get it to break free. All right, let me see what I can figure out. Okay, we got it freed up a little bit. Starting to move. If it's starting, we'll eventually get it. And luckily, we haven't had to do it so hard that we've been anything. There we go. All right. Let me show you the inside. I don't know if you can see all that rust and crusty down in there. With the rust in the intake, you know, it was only a matter of time before this thing was stuck. The engine was stuck and it was uh, no good. So we caught it at a good time. So I'm going to spray this out, get it cleaned up, pull the top off, and see if we can make this thing run again. Just sprayed right on up. Rust on that side too. And you want to get all the rust out of it. You definitely don't want that running down on top of a piston. So, Alright, let me get out. Okay, I took all the screws out and it's nice and loose. I like it when they're like that. Because you don't have to worry about tearing the gasket. more rust it might be where it ran down from from the top side right, lay that aside still got a few bugs in there some rust flakes Ooh. carburetor's got roaches or something some kind of bug Spider had its own ecosystem in there. All right. Well, we'll get it all cleaned out, but it looks really good. Choke's not. I mean, the float's not stuck. Anything like that. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a dirty issue in the carburetor. It just got water in it. So uh, we're gonna get this filter off. I meant to pick up a filter and didn't. I'm gonna check that out and blow it through and put some gas through it and just see what it looks like before I say as to whether I'm going to try it or not looks bad on the outside but that don't mean it looks good on you know it looks bad on the insides all these daggone spiders and stuff out of here all right get her cleaned up and back together get some carburetor cleaner here and the air hose all right okay folks carburetor's back on I think we've got all the vacuum plugged up now that particular fitting on the back that looks like an air hose fitting they've got something in there that's plugging that off so there's no vacuum leak there uh, got my gas tank on I spilled some gas on the other side uh, down close to the exhaust manifold because I had the tank back at that corner so uh, I've got to I let it dry out a little while here before I even try it you know gonna try it but I've got the uh, I've got a fire extinguisher right here in case I need it. Uh, throttle's hooked back up, so we should be able to do this from the inside. Now, I've got gas in the tank, and so far I don't see any gas leaking. So maybe our float, or, you know, well, I know our float's working good. Hopefully our seat's seating properly. So 
let's uh, see what happens here. I figured that bowl would be filled up, but maybe it's not. No, well, we're not getting any gas for some reason. We tap on the carburetor a little bit. Now a lot of that dust you're seeing today is terrible. I don't know if you can see this windshield. Let me turn it around. That's pollen. So we've got pollen falling really bad. You can always tell it's spring. So anybody's got allergies is kind of in a bad spot today. But a lot of the dust that you're seeing flying around is that. figure out what's going on because we're definitely not getting no fuel into the carburetor for some reason. Alright. I blew in the tank over there and pressurized it a little bit see if we can get it rolling. Not bad. Carburetor's still dripping. Uh, that's why I didn't clean the outside of it up or anything like that because I didn't have a kit to put in it. I don't know where it's dripping from. It's kind of weird where it's at, but 
I might be sitting there flooding out. Uh, transmission is low on fluid, very low. Shifter does not feel right, but that's probably because the engine's leaning down. So I think first on this thing, we need to get an engine mounted in like it ought to be. And uh, we'll just go from there. Uh, not sure when I'll have time to work on it. Probably next week. We'll start again. Still hear a lifter tapping, but you know, drive it a little bit, it'll probably clear up, I'm sure. So I don't see any issues with the engine. We've got no smoke at all. So I think she's gonna be fine and uh, figure out what that carburetor's leaking. Yeah, I think there's a diaphragm on the bottom, I think it's where it's leaking at. So it's just dripping. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but right down the front at the bottom side. Filling the intake full of gas. Right there next to the coil where it sparks at. And uh, anyway, so we'll do all that. Now I found another, uh, show you on the other side. Found another compression fitting on this side. So we're gonna go through all the brake lines. Uh, the brake pedal stuck too when I pushed it down to the floor. So it basically will have to go through the whole brake system, but on this car, going through the whole brake system only requires about $200, maybe a little less, so that's not bad. Got to figure something out on the tank. I may just put a temporary in the back for now. Uh, I don't want to stick a lot of money in this car because the value is not that high with it being a four-door. Uh, so, like I said, the main thing is the brake stuff, which is really not that important because, you know, if the brakes don't stop you, something will. All right, appreciate everybody watching. Till next time, bye.